So I'm going to hand straight over to our next speaker who's going to share with you his journey. Please put your hands together for Greg Reed. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yes, I'm Greg Reed, and uh, just very quickly, but I tell you about my background. I, I was in the corporate world for pretty much 20 years at, uh, at Cadbury, which I had a fantastic time, and I loved working at Cadbury. But I kind of recognised that through the various roles I did, be it operational, uh, be it strategic, or as I ended up as the head of seasonal chocolate supply for UK and Ireland, I kind of knew that that wasn't for me forever. Um, so I looked into property in 2004, as a good way of getting out. I tried shares before that and done pretty badly in shares. Uh, lost a fair bit of money, made a little bit of money, but I could see, for me, property was the way to go forward because no one's gonna sell it under your legs overnight. And, and it kind of seemed quite simple from the outside. And you just buy a house, it goes with your value and you sell it again. That kind of works for me. So I, I took some education with a company called Inside Track, who were good with their basic education. Uh, promising to show you how you did below market value deals, which, let's face it, is the holy grail for us all. Then, couldn't find any deals, so joined their sister company, which was called Instant Access, where you paid to join them. They would source these deals for you, all BMV, and then you made loads of money in the end. And of course, that didn't quite work out. They were a bit dodgy, to say the least. And so on the back of that, I lost money, other people lost money, people end up in jail. Um, I kind of became a cynic of property investing and thought, no, I'll, I've learnt enough. I'll go about this on my own, but actually struggled. I didn't find the deals, and for the next six years, didn't buy a, a, a property. And just kind of turned away from property in total, back into the corporate career, climbing the, the corporate ladder. Um, so I guess what changed, because for all of us, I could have, I had that comfortable lifestyle that I think somebody touched on earlier. It was easy to go to work, and it was easy to have that comfortable lifestyle, good, good mates at work, and, and really a good family life, but three things happened to me that made me think again. And the first one was the death of a, a very close friend of mine who was diagnosed with a brain tumour and from kind of diagnosis to death was less than six months. And that really challenged me to think about, you don't know how long you've got, are you happy with the choices you've made? And I had to say, probably not, you know, do I want to spend the rest of my life being told what to do in a big corporation with, with a relatively small pay rise each year, albeit it felt good at the time. So, no, I wasn't happy, but also taught me to value my friends and my family a lot more. So that kind of made me think, what is life about? And then when I had my first boy, Harrison, he, he kind of galvanised it for me. It, it is about family, it is about friends. And, I mean, I loved it so much, I've had another two since. Um, <laughs> which they also have the challenge. But I think you can see this timeline from 2008 to 2009. I didn't exactly take massive prompt action to do anything different, did I? So the third thing, really, the catalyst for me was when Kraft took over Cadbury. And despite the headlines, they are a very good company to work for, but it kind of meant my career prospects lay abroad rather than in this country. And when I've got old parents and three young children, it was never going to fit for my value sets to kind of move them around the country. So I made the decision then, I'd get out. The craft restructure gave me the opportunity through restructuring my team and, and being involved with the biggest restructure to kind of get out with a package. So I had a comfort blanket, I could go out there, try, and if I failed, well, I'll just get another job, won't I? But I was determined not to fail. And I think the difference being I needed to understand why I'd gone wrong last time and couldn't source these properties and what I needed to do differently this time. So clearly, I needed to get back to school. And I read Property Magic in April 2011. I recognised the bloke, Simon Zucci, because I used to work with him at Cadbury, and I thought, I could probably trust him. He won't be like the others. And I can genuinely say he isn't. <laughs> he's a one-off. But he's also very ethical about what he does. So I could work with that, and that kind of resonated with my values. And then I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is all about understanding how your assets work for you. And the combination of those two things gave me enough of an appetite to think, I could probably do this, but let's go and sample it. Went on a quick, quick start in April 2013, quickly followed by the accelerator, where Julie Barlow bullied me, I mean, really coerced me <laughs> at the end of the day to sign up with my wife, who was eight months pregnant by then. She's saying, the two of you can do it. Come on, you'll love it. So I was lucky enough to get away with that, but I'm really grateful to Julie for doing it because I was determined not to at the end of Quick Start, so thank you for that. But I knew all the strategies under Accelerator, but I knew that I kind of wanted the support, and given that I'd now got myself into a position to leave Cadbury, I thought I'd really need to replace my cash flow quickly. So I, I signed up for Mastermind because I thought, 
with this bunch around me, how can I fail? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't see your faces when I made that decision, by the way. So uh, my reason why and my goals, it's very simple, really. Quality time with family and friends, no different to most people in this room. But uh, Richard touched on being selfish, yeah, over, you know, as well as a family and friends bit. I want to do things, I want my freedom. I want to choose what I do in my life. And to go around the world looking at sporting events with my kids, I'm not going to leave them behind, by the way, and my wife, but to take my family around the world to see you know, World Cups, to see rugby, World Cups, to see golf, if we get any better, to watch cricket. Um, that's what I want, and that's important to me. So, very simplistically, my goals were to replace my income through cash flow as fast as I possibly could, because when you're in the corporate world, you get kind of an expensive lifestyle, and, and you need to cover the bills first and foremost to, to really take the pressure off, and particularly with the family. I mean, I, I got three children when I joined Mastermind. They were four, two, and two months old. So if you're going to plan when to leave work, it wouldn't have been then. But I guess the lesson then is that there's never a good time, and actually there's never a bad time. So just go and do it and get the right level of education. And then with the strategies we've learned, aim as high as you can. So unoriginally, my core strategy was HMOs because I needed the cash flow. And I hoped that they would grow in value, but you can't ever guarantee it. And above that, I think if I'm going to position myself, and this was about the mindset I learned and developed on Mastermind, I'm not just buying houses anymore. I'm now a professional investor. That's what I kept telling myself. Um, so I had to monetize every single lead I got. And I guess Rich has touched on it already. There are loads of leads that come to nothing. But if you have the right set of skills, more of those leads can be used than you think. So I've looked to monetize a lot of leads. And my plan was to, to get involved with most of my leads in some respect and apply the skills I'd learned on Accelerator to make money from them. And also, not just that, to kind of appeal to the investors about, would you please invest in me? So it was a very simple strategy. Now, here's the first deal I did. It was a three-bed semi, which was uh, in an Erdington in Birmingham, which isn't the nicest area, but it lets really, really well. And apologies if you're watching at home in Erdington. <laughs> There's a lot worse areas. Um, it was a three-bed semi. It was effectively... Sorry, it's a three-storey semi. It was a five-bed residence. And, and we found this through an estate agent which was a sale that fell through. The motivation was that the lady who owned the house needed to move because her daughter was in the catchment area and she would have missed that year at school. So she had to move out. And it was only a modest discount, but it was 10%. And our solution was just to kind of buy it and then convert it. Um, and, and because it was a five bed already, to convert it from a five to seven bed just meant we had to change the downstairs reception rooms. Very simple stuff. None of this is complex, but that was a straightforward plan. And with all the bill costs going in, that conversion cost us around £38,000. So just very quickly, the numbers, we bought it for 162. It was valued at 180. With joint venture partners, I bought this property because the difference about when you leave a company is you have no provable income. So I bought it with JV partners because I needed commercial finance for HMOs, and that's something I learned on the course. And so to get their credibility was really important, so I was mortgageable. And then once I got this deal under my belt, I could then go back and get more and more. Um, as it stood, we actually spent around £43,000 on this to convert it. And with on top of that, the deposit money, it meant that the total, um, sorry, the total rental achievable was about 2800 a month, which we are getting more than that, thankfully. Our net cash flow is 980 so the, the return on investment for us, which is a really important metric for me, is it worth me putting my money into this house or not? These numbers kind of suggested that it would be a 13% return on investment, and that's based upon a repayment mortgage as well. So just to do the top tip is, if you're going to get commercial, mainly it's repayment. So make sure your numbers work for you. But it, as a 13% return, it's respectable, but not life-changing. But actually at £980 per month, you don't need too many of those before your bills are covered. But my second deal I enjoyed more, one, because I did it on my own, but uh, secondly, because it earned lots more money. And this was something that by this time I was telling people I was an investor. My neighbours heard me say that. They believed me which is fantastic. Um, they worked on, a on the board of a charity who really need to sell this property quickly because they were they'd being managed badly and, and the austerity cuts are kicked in and they, therefore between those two things, if they didn't sell a house, they would end up losing all the services they could deliver in the community. So I managed to talk to them and really genuinely put their needs first and that's the other important thing I learned on Mastermind. It isn't about you negotiating, it's about you really listening really understanding if you can help those people, then you will feel better about life, but also you will really be able to serve them the right way. 
And it was a great deal for, for us both. I could give them the money they needed to avoid laying people off and folding. Um, it was a big house already set up for a charity. It was a seven bed HMO. And really it was a straightforward opportunity to buy it from them and lease it back to them so they could carry on delivering the great care that they were doing. They chose not to choose that option in the end, but it kind of opened my eyes to opportunities, which I'll come on to later. And very simplistically, it was about adding value. There were two rooms in this house they weren't letting out. And I thought, well, for another two rooms at the kind of income you can get in the area, it wouldn't cost me a lot of money. In fact, it cost me £3,800 to put curtains, carpets and furniture in and then apply for my licence to uh, upgrade the HMO and then let it back out again. And so the, the deal here, I bought it for 183000 which is exactly what they bought it for a few years earlier and that's all they wanted out of it. The cost for me buying was 7200 I use joint venture finance on this one. This is people that have lent me their money because I'm now educated and, and I know what I'm doing. That I took their money, put it into this house and was able to then go to the banks afterwards and refinance it. But it made a gross rental of 3,315 per month with a net cash flow after I paid back my investors of 2,673 a month. So it's a pretty good return on investment from the money I put in to effectively the, the um, rental income I was getting of around 40%. But then when I went back to the bank and refinanced it a few weeks later, they valued it at 350,000, purely because a lot of extension work had been done on it, which the charity hadn't told me about, that increased the value overall, and it stacked up brilliantly. So I could then take all of my money out, and it still makes 24,000 pounds a year with just one house. So I was really happy with that deal. And I guess the key tip to pass on at this point in time is, Lloyd's Commercial, if you buy cash and then you go to the commercial finances, you can get your money out within 12 weeks. You don't have to wait six months. So think about that if you need to build your momentum when you invest. So my summary so far, and I'm sorry this is a busy one, but there's a number of deals I've done applying my techniques with assisted sales and whatever else. But in total, um, the property value is 1.9 million pounds. The mortgages have got around £991,000 with investors and mortgages. The equity is just £900,000 um, in, in 11 months so far. And the net income I have, which is without all bills and all the rest of it coming out, my total profit um, will be 114000 a year. Now, that's on a repeatable basis, it'll be 110 because I did assisted sale. But that's effectively what I've done in the 12 months with the help of, of the people I've worked with. And I guess for me, uh, it means I can relax a little, bit, a little bit now. I think from, if I look at my journey so far over this year, I've left my job in January 2014. Um, it felt absolutely fantastic and I've never looked back. And I did enjoy it there, but I've never looked back since. It doesn't feel like work what I do now. The freedom of choice to do what I want to do. I've made loads of mistakes, by the way, but far fewer in this environment, thanks to your help and the guys on the forum and my coaches and mentors. I've made far fewer mistakes than I would have done and less severe ones. But if you're gonna take action, you make mistakes. I've learned absolutely loads as I've gone through this. And I must admit, I've got some amazing new friends, new business connections, and I've had loads and loads of fun. So I thank you all for that. I've raised over 600,000 pounds with the JV Finance. It would never have happened without me educating myself, knowing what I'm talking about, and going out and talking to people and sounding like an expert, because you know what? You become that when you do this process. Um, and every day, I spent quality time with my family, taking the kids to school, going to various events with them, spending time with my parents, which is important for me, because they're, uh, they're not in the greatest shape at the moment. Um, and also, I'm doing a lot of stuff now, presenting at pin meetings and, and uh, going to, to various events where, as an investor, you can kind of add value. And one of the things I've been able to do, and I've been inv invited onto the board of trust for a, a local business that offers care packages, I've been able to take up this position because I, I've got a business sense and I know about property and, and what they're great at is care and provision, but not particularly business savvy. So I've got the time to do that for nothing, but it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, but really excitingly for me, I mean, this is kind of the next step. So I've set up a company with three, two of the masterminders, Dave Morris and Dan Norman, uh, who are also experts with complementary skill sets to mine that mean that the thing I love doing, we can do and scale up incredibly. And for the properties I buy, I lease them out long term. There are no costs to me other than the actual provision of, um, of you know, a roof and some insurance. But it costs us very little money to do that. And working with those two guys, we've really accelerated our progress. And we can actually provide something for the most needy in our community now. This is our logo. This is a plug. Look out for that. 
Um, it is about quality accommodation for supported living, and we're very proud of what we're doing. So I think not only has this process given me the skills, but also we've got a partnership with that charity now to, to supply 80 to 100 units a year for the next four or five years, which is a pretty sustainable model. And again, would never have happened without the people in this environment. And my top tips, therefore, if you're watching at home and you're thinking about it, my top tips, or if you're not and you're in this room, just have a clear reason why. Everyone said it, but if you're not driven to do what you want and you don't know what you're trying to achieve, you'll never get there. And this is a bit about anchoring it in your emotion. When you think about your reason why it should bring a tear to your eye or a smile to your face, and if it doesn't, chuck it out and find something that does. Um, I guess that, as Les has already talked about, gets you through those tough times that you will have, and it can be lonely in this business, but also remember to celebrate your achievements. My kids have been involved with setting my targets all the way through. They've drawn pictures of houses we've got to get before they can go to Disneyland, all those things they've been involved with, and I thank them for that. And I have to say hello, Harrison, Cameron, and Lachlan, and Mum. Next tip is to, to really invest in your own education. Mastermind has been phenomenal for me, and I would never have achieved it without this process. And, but as you go through that, keep an open mind. The education gives you the chance to spot, spot opportunities. You then need to know to take them. Um, it also gives you the credibility with investors, and to generate £600,000 with the funds would not have happened again without me being a credible investor. And if you're in Mastermind, embrace the process. I am nothing special. I've just followed the process, done what Simon's told me to do, and had a pretty good year on the back of it. I guess the other really important thing I would recommend is a mistake I made. Know what your key metrics are up front because if you don't know what they are, you can't act urgently and quickly and you can't act with certainty and that's what most of the people that we deal with need. And finally, it helps you line up funds. And I guess the final point for me is just do it. Take massive, massive action. The correct stuff, as Les has already said, you know, don't go out there doing the wrong thing. But just take action and you, 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 know, you will come across the perfect deal but don't wait for it. But I think you will amaze yourself with what you're capable of doing just by getting out there. Finally, I just want to say thank you. This isn't the Oscars, I know, but I just want to say thank you to Jay, my wife. She's been amazing. I couldn't have done this without her. That's absolutely true. To, to my coach, Simon G, who can't be here today, but Simon, brilliant. Thank you. You've dragged a lot of stuff out of me, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, Andy Haynes has been the avuncular presenter. I always look forward to seeing Andy. And uh, I will miss that on this stage, and you're, you're putting gags. That'll, that'll be a real loss, <laughs> a loss to me. Um, and, and I think really, seriously, everyone in this room, because to listen to your stories every single month, which are inspiring to me, and to listen to my buddies and really kind of get that connection with you guys, it's been brilliant. So thank you so much for all your help over that year. And I, I mean, I couldn't have done it without you guys. And I guess there's somebody else I've forgotten. Oh! <laughs> I have to say thank you to Simon, because I, I mean this. There are very few people who would create an environment like this. And I think if you relive a number of the, the success stories over the last few years. Simon's made very many people's dreams come true. And I think I am eternally grateful to Simon for that because I can now live the lifestyle I choose to live because he's been generous enough to share. So massive thanks to Simon. And if you want to get hold of me, Greg at New Leaf Living, that is our new company. I may have mentioned it, but uh, I genuinely will continue to help anyone that wants my help. So please stay in touch. Thanks a lot. <laughs>